Greetings, folks. Douglas Smythe here, coming at you live from the lab. I took today, well, this morning, I got a round table going on later on today, in fact. So if you're around, go to, let's see, wetshaversroundtable.com and sign up to join us tonight and uh, be in on the conversation with us and bring your thoughts to the table. It's a hot seat edition, so we're going to be taking members of, this, of our audience on live. So, but I, you know, while I was here this morning, I thought I would make a small video on how I perfume or uh, make my aftershaves or colognes because I've seen a lot of talk lately about prices of certain things and everyone wants a $15 aftershave and yada 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 and why are, why are yours so expensive and I want to say one of the reasons, well straight up, why they're more expensive is there's more time involved. Uh, there's more traditional perfuming going on than just simply uh, splashing some things together which I'll demonstrate right now. I actually already demonstrated it in my video but I'll show you my end product here. So this is your basic aftershave right here. And what I did was I added um, denatured alcohol, put that in first. Then I added some pineapple, some pre-blended uh, pineapple that I bought. So I don't even have to worry about blending it or letting it sit to mature while I, after I blended it. It's already blended, it's pineapple. So alcohol, I added a, a percentage of pineapple essential oil to it. When I was done, I added some distilled water to the rest of it, uh, a little bit of glycerin, and I even threw in some menthol crystals. And this is good to go. I could put this on my site now for 12 or $15 and people would love that. Uh, and you know what? Nothing wrong with that. It gets the job done. It's a little foggy. My ratio was off with the water. I could, with that space at the top, I could add a little more alcohol and clear that up. But uh, there's also menthol dissolving in there. But that's, that's it. That's a $15 aftershave right there. Uh, and it's good to go. And it'll get the job done. Nothing wrong with it again. Uh, it's just funny when people say it's about the money. If it was really about the money, I would just bump these bad boys out. But I'm more into the craft of it all. Uh, that said, what I would do, or what I do, or how it all begins is over here. This is biomass. These petals, I've already deflowered them, if you will, and broken them up and uh, rinsed them thoroughly to get rid of any impurities, dirt, bugs, or maybe even pesticides if they were sprayed with that. Clean them thoroughly, let them soak, and then they are put into the distilling flask. And as I said before, uh, I'm making a video, so this will all be up on YouTube eventually, but I wanted to show you live what's happening. This is the distilling flask right here. So that's jam-packed with petals. This is a 500 milliliter distilling flask I'm using just for the sake of this video. Typically it would be larger, uh, I would glean more hydrosols, which are flower waters, and essential oil. So uh, what you're seeing right now is the heating element under, below. In the past, I've used Bunsen burners. I've used all sorts of things. This seems to be the best one right now with a ceramic piece on top. It uh, creates a, an even boil, if you will, and I control the temperature. So you see all the biomass in there and water. What's happening is it's boiling. Um, now, mind you, I started at 11 today. It's now 12 or 10 past 12 just to give you a little idea of what the time's like or what how much time this takes. So, you see this boiling, it's creating steam, it's pushing up through the flowers, uh, petals, or biomass, whatever you're using. It's creating a vapor. On that vapor is, is carried uh, the essence of the flower, if you will, the scent, uh, essential oils, and, and other uh, molecules of uh, the biomass. It's floating up here, going through here, the condenser, as in form of steam, uh, in those little tubes. Now, if you see, there's cold water being pumped through the bottom and releasing through the top. This will turn the steam back into a liquid, which will float down into here. I'm using a measuring uh, cup to catch it today. Um, and that'll be a combination of hydrosol or flower water, rose flower water in this instance, uh, and essential oil. The essential oil will float on the top whenever you glean some. That will be separated afterwards in the separator here. Uh, this lets out just the essential oil. You gotta kind of watch it as you do it, as you turn that knob, and you can tweak it to catch just the essential oil and leave the flower, the hydrosol, or vice versa. Uh, here is the pump with the cold water. I have to continue to dr uh, drop ice in there. Must remain cool to convert it back to a liquid. So that is this end, and this again is the hydrosol and the essential oil collecting. And this is still a long way to cook down. I was also showing folks another, well, okay, let's just talk about this. So once I have collected the essential oil and the hydrosols, I'll separate them. 
I'll then use the essential oil to create a base blend of what I'll be using in a fragrance or in an aftershave. This is all is about is all the essential oils and fragrances blended in a bottle, in a a light protective bottle, protected from the light. This will be mixed on, let's say, a Monday. It won't be ready to use until Friday, maybe even Saturday or Sunday. I have to keep smelling it. When I first blend it, it does not smell like Alphine. It needs to mix, mingle, and mature. So it needs to settle and, and develop the Alphine scent that you know and love. So after a week of that, I'll, I will use it in making <laughs> a cologne or aftershave. Um, I demonstrated in my video, Sangre de Drago here, how this was ready. It was done. This has been maturing uh, for four to six, uh, six weeks actually, this one. And in this blend, what you're seeing is, well now you're seeing the finished product, but this would be uh, originally denatured alcohol and 14 different scent ingredients, be them absolutes, uh, essential oils, resins, so on and so forth. And they're breaking down and bumping around in there for four to six weeks. Every day it's pulled out of, that's their cabinet, or that's the cabinet. It's pulled out of the cabinet and historically you'd have this in a mason jar back in the day, old school apothecary style, and you'd give it a shake, a good shake, a couple of shakes every day. I mix it. I use a mixer, I used to use a glass stirrer. And I think of this, as I mentioned in my video, as photography. Typically I talk about making perfumes or colognes as a three-act play. But that's after the fact. That's when you're wearing it. That's dry down and so on and so forth. When I'm making perfume, having studied, well, I went to art school, so I studied photography. I actually had my own darkroom too. I think of it now, in this stage, as developing a picture. Uh, what you're seeing now is the done picture. The picture is done, it's been developed, and it's been stop bath. Uh, but it wasn't stop bath up until an hour ago when I added the water to it. Uh, well, flower waters. It was labdanum, orange blossom, and sage went in there, and that pretty much stops the action of maturing. It's not completely, but it, get, it, it locks in the scent that you have now. Um, along the way, different ingredients were added, like aloe or glycerin at different times of the maturing process. Again, I'd like to address ingredients. If you look at, if you have a collection of my aftershaves or colognes, you'll notice that it's not the same formulation. Again, if it was about the money, I would just stick with one formula and change the scent. But I have the, you know, the scent in mind. So let's say aloe. Aloe has a certain unique scent, or liquid silk. Liquid silk has a certain unique scent. It's earthy, it's almost animalistic. Uh, so it has to pair well with the scents I'm using in order for it to be used. I want more bang for my buck. I want dual purpose. I want it to add to the scent, fill in the gaps, add some depth, but also moisturizing and medicinal properties to the after, uh, to the finished product. So that's why you'll see that change. It's also a bitch when you're trying to get EU certified because now I have to get each cologne I make different paperwork. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long, arduous process because I choose to do this for the art of it and for the passion of it all. So what we're seeing now is filtering. And a lot of people don't see this. This is a little behind the scenes. Now see the rate that that is filtering at? Let me just add a little bit more water in the meantime. Check out Blue Sam Hain, or Sam, well, Sam Hain is what some would say, or So Win is the right way to pronounce that. Those are oak blocks you're seeing in there as it's maturing. So I'm adding, you can't see this because I only have two hands, but I'm adding more Sangre de Drago to the filter. Now this is for about 10 minutes now. That's how much is left. That's how much has been filtered. When you add more to it, it filters a little bit faster but that's the rate it filters at. This will take all day to do. So this won't get bottled until tomorrow. All the, <laughs> the resins, the absolutes, the essential oils, the biomass, the uh, aroma chemicals will clog up that filter throughout the day and you kind of have to give it a shake. Um, but this is filtering the aftershave. This is what happens after people don't realize this is what's going on. And if those particles are still in there or impurities, it'll be filtered again. So that's another part of the perfuming process, or traditional perfuming. Oh, let me cover this up. That also has, yeah, a lot of ingredients. Uh, so back to the distiller. 
Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I chose yellow uh, roses today um, simply because the smell of these at the store, at the florist, where it was, it was there. It was very present. I wanted to collect it. And that's pretty much what you're doing. You're prolonging the life or scent or essence of a flower when you distill it. Otherwise, the flower will die and it's gone. So there we go. You see the cold water running up and out. And again, this is all the hydrosol I've gleaned so far. And I only see like two droplets of essential oil in there. So that tells you <laughs> how much flower pet petals or biomass it takes to create essential oils. And that's why essential oils or certain essential oils are so flippin' expensive. Very expensive. And that's why a lot of people choose to use fragrance oils. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I enjoyed the process. So yeah, and again, I used a 500 milliliter um, uh, distilling flask. So I still have biomass left over. This will be used later on or maybe in another video. So that's just a, a little peep into how this works and why my uh, aftershaves or colognes are just a little bit more expensive than most because a lot of time and energy goes into them. It's not necessarily about the money. It's about getting paid for what you do, what you love, the American dream, and pouring your passion and art into what you do. <laughs> so let's take one last look at the filtering. There's Sangre de Drago. Drip, drip, drip. Coffee filters faster than this. It even looks like coffee. So yeah, this will take a day to filter as the filter inside becomes uh, clogged up with the naturals. Just to give you a little example of how long this takes. It's five and a half hours since we began the process of filtering the Sangre de Drago. Still have that much left to go. And check out the rate this is filtering at. So being a Saturday, this might not get bottled till Monday now if I choose not to come in tomorrow, which it looks like I'm going to have to do. So... Filtration takes a long time, and let's hope it got everything the first pass. Still filtering.